So in a CDS, you have a protection buyer who is in 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 effect, if you want to, it's not a perfect analogy, but it's slightly analogous to it. Let's say you want to take out insurance on a particular default. So I buy protection in the CDS, and the other side of the, the transaction is the sell protection guy who is receiving a premium for covering the the end, the, the slightly imperfect analogy to an insurance contract. That person is providing insurance if the reference name defaults. So what you would have is this transaction linked to a reference name that has, to answer your question now, no connection with either party, in theory. Now, in other words, anybody can buy protection. I could, if I'm an institution, let's say a hedge fund, and I want to buy protection on Greek sovereign, I don't necessarily have to own any Greek sovereign bonds. Now, you might say, ah, well, then why would I do it? But that then becomes a speculative instrument, because when I buy protection, I am paying a premium. I'm equivalent, in the equivalent of that is to short a bond. Now, I wouldn't, nor normally in a cash market, if I short a bond, I have to be able to deliver it to the person who's bought it from me. So I'll borrow it in the repo market, for example. Um, I'll do a reverse repo and then deliver the bond in that way. And then during that time, I'm paying the coupon on the cash bond because I've shorted it. Now, that is, wh why does one short anything? Because one expects the price to drop. So it, a speculative trade on a transaction uh, where the reference name is and has no connection with either party would be an example of that. Now, in the EU, they were debating banning doing this side of the trade unless one actually had an exposure to it, which was your question about the relationship to it. Now, as far as I'm aware, that ban's not been enforced. But then again, they're the ones that want to introduce our financial transactions tax. Um, now, there's another author that's just come out, Thomas Piketty. Have we come across Thomas Piketty? He has concluded after a mammoth 15-year study of GDP per capita and incomes across the world over the last two, three hundred years, that there is one solution to inequality, that's a global wealth tax. <laughs> now, why do I think of Thomas Piketty? Because I thought of the EU wanting to ban shorting names by buying protection in CDS. Now, forget the merits of that. You might ask yourself why someone would want to do that side of it when I don't have the exposure in the first place. Because why would I want to do that? Think of my first motivation for doing a CDS. It was to manage risk. Originally, CDS were developed as an interbank transaction. Two banks, one has got a portfolio of syndicated loans or corporate loans, assets that are long dated, illiquid, difficult to get off the balance sheet, but they are perceived to be deteriorating credit quality uh, over the next, for the sake of argument, say five years. They might have a 20 year life on them. Okay? So the bank is concerned with this credit risk exposure on its balance sheet and decides it wants to have a form of insurance over it. So it sets up, they invent the credit default swap. It buys protection for that five-year term, bearing in mind the portfolio of the reference assets that it actually has on the balance sheet is longer data than five years, so it's like a temporary risk mitigation measure. It buys that, it pays the premium, just like an insurance contract, and then after five years, the, the, the transaction expires. If during that time one of the loans defaults, then the full notional value is paid over, which is the dotted line here, by this fellow to the buyer of protection, and in return for that, the buyer of protection hands over the loan. Now, a loan, what is a loan? Well, it's a legal contract. You know, when you take out a mortgage, you get something in the post, you sign it, you send it back. Car loan, credit card, one, well, credit cards maybe not. Um, <laughs> but you see what I mean? The loan actually is documentation. So what do you do when there's default? You hand over the loan documentation. That is now owned by the seller of protection. This is what is physical settlement. And the reason CDSs originally were physically settled were precisely because they were transacted to manage risk, okay, to manage current credit risk exposure, loan risk exposure on the balance sheet. And in fact, there's a type of contract called a loan-only CDS. I have some slides in the appendices for your interest, if you are interested, that is more akin to what originally CDS was about, which is a risk management tool for lo corporate loan books. Okay? So that's a long-winded answer to your question. The answer is no. Neither party need have any relationship with the reference name. Okay, so this could be a hedge fund, that could be a bank, it could be linked to Greek sovereign, and none of them have any exposure to Greek sovereign bonds. You see what I mean? So it's that's using it as a speculative tool. Now, you can do that in cash markets. It's just more difficult to do. Okay? You can do any of this in cash markets, it's just harder to do. But that's one of the motivations for, for, for entering into it. The original motivation was to manage loan portfolio um, risk expo credit risk exposure. I have one more question here. Please talk about the contingent payment. Is it a single payment of just the face value of the bond due to maturity, or does the contingent payment include the coupons and final bullet payment in credit events? The content, that's a good question. 
The contingent payment is just notional. It's par. So if I take out... So, um, so the contingent payment here, let's just... Uh, actually, I've got a term sheet here. Here we go. So the notional in this slide here is 10 million. Now, let's just assume there is a physically... Actually, it is. Slide 15 says physically settled. So if there is a default, the protection seller hands over the 10 million notional, okay? In return for which the protection buyer hands over the reference asset, okay? Now, if it's cash settled, it, you hand over one minus recovery rate. You hand over the recovery rate amount, not the full notional, okay? In theory, the recovery rate is the value of the physically settled handed over bond as well. But of course, in practice, recovery rates are not known at the time of default, are they? I mean, in the case of Lehman's, it's taken them, uh, what, six years to identify even the first amount of recovery, okay? Some recovery processes take 10, 12 years or even longer. BCCI took, it's for some of the creditors in BC, BCCI, before your time. Bank of Credit and Commerce International from 1991, right? Um, when that went bust, some of the uh, creditors on that got their payments 20 odd years later. Now the recovery rate for those poor fellows was, 20, was known 20 years later. So the way CDS has settled in a cash settled transaction is through what's called a dealer poll. 30 days after the default has been identified as a credit event, you have a dealer poll. How much would you pay for their defaulted assets? Okay, the, the highest bidder wins. Let's say I pay 10 cents on the dollar. That's the recovery rate. So the contingent payment then becomes par or notional minus the 10. If you see what I mean, it becomes 10, okay? So it, they hand over the recovery rate amount and that's the transaction concluded, okay? So sometimes the CDS price is called the CDS spread. I prefer to call it premium because it isn't a spread over anything. It's a straight fixed fee. In this case, 386 points, uh, 386 basis points. Right, CDS levels reflect market perceptions. Yes, absolutely right. So here's US banks in 2010 to 2012, and you can see during that point there, when they were particularly unfavoured, they spiked up. Similarly for EU banks, okay? And in fact, if the forthcoming EU stress tests are anything to go by, then um, I imagine we'll be seeing more of that activity.